Thank you for the organizers to invite me uh, to present a new company that uh, got, got started um, earlier this year. It's only about six months old. And uh, we just uh, are completing uh, the seed round financing and soon will then embark on the Series A. But before I dig into the slides, um, I have the benefit of being, I guess, the last of the presenting companies. And um, I want to make an observation that sort of goes back to um, the beginning of, of, of my career. I'm, I'm a molecular biologist, biochemist, um, and I started in pharmacogenetics. And pharmacogenetics eventually became personalized medicine. Um, I worked at the FDA in the early 2000s, building the genetics genomics group. Um, so if you hear anything about companion diagnostics, biomarker qualification, etc., cetera, um, blame the bad things on whoever came after me. I tried to get it done in the early 2000s. So to really get the personalized medicine uh, idea um, off the ground. About 12 years ago, um, I got into the longevity field for the first time. And given my background, we looked at it literally from the personalized medicine angle. At that time, we had the idea to sequence the genomes of about 100 supercentenarians. That was an effort uh, that was combined with, I, I worked at a company called Medco, and it was uh, XPRIZE, XPRIZE Foundation, Genomics XPRIZE, that was sponsored, or that we, we co-sponsored. Um, needless to say, uh, that didn't really result in anything tangible. And a few years later, I joined a company that literally was called, or still is, uh, called Human Longevity. And there we had the idea to take not just a few genomes, but a million genomes to get deeper into the personalized aspect of what ultimately refers to longevity. None of that really panned out. And what I find refreshing, and that's why I'm saying it, standing here now, is that over the last day and a half, we've heard a lot of presentations that go back to very fundamental ideas of what actually constitutes disease and how we tackle disease at a much broader level. Not necessarily at the personalized medicine level, but at a broader level. And sort of rethink the way that we're addressing um, longevity. So I believe that ultimately, if we're going to be able to combine these two aspects, um, we really have, for the first time, a grasp for what we can do in the field and change the way that patients are being treated. Page Therapeutics is such a play. It's a platform play. It's an idea um, that originated um, based on the phenomenon that we know that metastasis in cancer is bad. If you look at the five-year survival rate in breast cancer, um, Non-metastatic breast cancer uh, patients survive 80 to 90 percent after four, uh, five years. Metastatic ones um, have a very poor uh, prognosis. So what if we could shift um, these lines up here? That's the idea behind PAGE. You know cancer is a leading cause of death. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's responsible for a lot of suffering. Um, and we know that a lot of patients, like what I just illustrated with breast cancer, die of metastasis. It's true for basically every cancer that is out there. So we're focusing on not just a specific cancer. We're focusing on every solid tumors um, that we know have a phenomenon that we're going to address. And we believe that we can prevent metastases, and we have a way to do that. In a nutshell, circulating tumor cells. So when you have a solid tumor or you have an existing metastasis, they shed cells into circulations, and these cells can appear as single cells or as clusters. The problem is that clusters are the ones that lead to metastases. Single circulating tumor cells do not. There are no drugs available today that dissolve these clusters. So it's a logical consequence of this finding that you think, well, what if we can dissolve these clusters? My colleague and co-founder, Nicola Aceto, found a prototype substance that does that. And based on that finding, was able to show that indeed, if you dissociate these clusters, 
metastasis is being prevented. It was shown in a mouse model where also, and importantly, overall survival of these animals significantly increased. We have a clinical trial going on in breast cancer patients with this proof of concept compound to show that we can also dissolve these clusters in breast cancer patients. So, if you forget everything else I'm going to say from now on forward, this is the take home message. So, we believe that we can develop drugs that block the formation of new metastases by dissolving these CTC clusters and can do so in the presence of other treatments, standard therapeutic treatments for oncology or in oncology, and with that reach a synergy of killing cells, which is what traditional um, tumorigenic agents do, with the dissolution of these clusters. So as I mentioned, um, this is based on a groundbreaking discovery uh, by Nicola Aceto, uh, who won the 2021 Swiss Science Prize uh, LATSIS, and really enables for the first time to develop drugs that specifically target the metastatic uh, process. I already mentioned um, you have uh, single and clustered circulating tumor cells in your circulation. And it's important to note that it's specifically the clusters that have also neutrophils that are then able to go to new organs or other organs and start building uh, or, or, or develop into uh, new metastatic growth. So dissolving this is what we're, what we're after. Clinically, um, since this early discovery, um, a lot of uh, prospective and retrospective research has been done to look at what is the clinical prognosis for patients that have CTC clusters. And it's literally across the board of solid tumors where you find that the association of, oops, of clusters in the bloodstream, in, the, in, in circulation, correlates with poor survival rates. You can have circulating tumor cells and no clusters, or you can have no circulating tumor cells, and you see that in the Kaplan-Meier curves, the overall survival rates are going straight up. Importantly, and as I mentioned, um, this is not just due to the fact that you have these cells shed from the primary tumor, but they can also shed from metastatic growth or metastatic lesions that already are existing. That's important because that also means that the approach that we're taking is valid, not just at the very early stage of cancer, but also in late stage cancers. So we really believe that we have uh, an idea, that a therapeutic um, approach that is um, universally applicable across many different uh, tumor stages. Now, who sheds those cells? Well, it's not just um, found in all tumor types, it is also found in pretty much all patients that, that have um, a, a cancer. Interestingly, though, you find most of these uh, circulating tumor cells and clusters during the rest phase. So that was little or no understood until blood was drawn in the middle of the night from patient cancer, cancer, from cancer patients, um, no, figuring out that this mechanism is truly something that pretty much every cancer patient is affected by and thereby um, subject to potential formation of metastases. So again, this is not anything that is unique to a specific cancer type or to a specific cancer patient. This is something that is found across the board of solid tumors. So therefore, the concept that we have is relatively simple. Uh, dissolve the clusters and suppress the metastatic potential of circulating tumor cells. Importantly, if you look at the current paradigm of uh, cancer treatments, you basically look at tumor killing approaches. So let's say you have um, a, a tumor, you start treating with, with uh, drug one, you look at progression-free survival, it lasts a while, and you will inevitably have uh, resistance uh, build up. You do the same. Uh, the second time around, you have resistance build up again. What you end up with 
is a highly aggressive cancer and a relatively short overall survival. We believe that if we look at the paradigm of not necessarily killing cancer cells, but dissolving uh, the, these, these clusters, preventing uh, the formation of metastases, that we extend the life because we look at a much more lower aggressiveness and thereby um, uh, can, in combination also with other drugs, extend the usability, the eff efficacy of these other drugs. The idea is based on, uh, basic, on, 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 on three key steps. Um, that's the platform that we're using. It's the um, capturing of uh, the circulating tumor cells, the extraction of the clusters of these circulating tumor cells, and, and um, that is a, a key step in this process, the growth, growing, the, the in vitro growing of those uh, cells so that we can then uh, subject those cells, those clusters, um, to uh, drugs, to candidate drugs that show uh, the dissolution. Uh, Nicola has done that for uh, a series of um, uh, drugs that are all FDA approved, so about two and a half thousand, and uh, went, went through that uh, screening process and found some uh, where, if you look at the uh, the cluster size, so it's decreasing in size here, and the viability, as I mentioned, we don't want to kill the cells, so we look for high viability and, and, and high dissolution power. Found some that actually do what we want them to do, but just not very good. We want to be in that, in that upper um, right-hand corner. Um, the drug that he identified um, is, is um, uh, digoxin, it's a sodium potassium um, ATPase, and basically what it does is, what, what, what the, the mechanism behind this is, is um, a weakening of the cell-cell junction, um, so that um, once uh, those cells separate from the, from the primary tumor or from the metastases, there is this last bit of dissociation that is necessary to, to, to basically sort of kick them over the curb to be separated for good. So it's basically the idea that they already are this destined to, to separate from the tumor or from the, metastas, from the metastatic lesion. Um, they just didn't get enough of that inhibitory um, effect. So we're, when, when um, this sodium ATPase, sodium potassium ATPase is inhibited further, it's that last step. And that's represented, if you look at the uh, gene expression pattern. So, so this is a normal epithelium uh, cell uh, with, with, with high expression of cell junction uh, 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 genes and proteins. And if you look at the clusters, they have still some left, but not very much. And then if you look at single uh, circulating tumor cells, they basically have none of these um, uh, junction um, uh, genes expressed. If you take that forward into um, a mouse experiment and uh, use a, a transgenic mice uh, with, with a, um, a humanized uh, oops, tumor, um, you, you then uh, uh, treat that, uh, this, this, these animals uh, with digoxin. You see that the single uh, uh, CTCs, the number goes up. That's what we expect. The CTC clusters go dramatically down. And when you then look at the presence of metastases, and this is a log scale, this is not linear, uh, you see that you truly prevent um, metastases from uh, formation. So in this case, um, with this model compound, we see a drastic 80-fold reduction of the formation of new metastases. As I mentioned, we also uh, took that forward already into a clinical trial. This is currently going on at the University of Basel and now also at the University um, in, in Zurich. Um, it, treating breast cancer patients with digoxin, um, a trial that is truly just a proof of concept. So we're not looking at increase in survival rates, but we're looking at whether or not the same approach that we've seen in animals also works um, in, in humans. And uh, the target uh, is a small trial. It's only for nine patients um, from the first. I don't remember exactly. We have five or six 
um, we know that indeed it works. So we're going to be able to dissolve uh, circulating tumor cell clusters also in patients with breast cancer. The drug discovery strategy, um, we look for structure activity relationships for improving upon digoxin. Um, we're looking at new classes of inhibitors of the same sodium potassium ATPase, but there are also other targets that we already know of that are druggable that we can, that we can target with small molecules. And we're going to screen entire libraries uh, for activity that shows in that um, platform assay that I, that I um, presented uh, the potential for the dissociation of these cells. Our goal with the seed financing that we're closing right now is to generate new IP on these compounds. So this is a little bit a cart before the horse kind of situation where we started the company before we have composition of matter IP, but because we have the platform and we already know from the proof of concept compound that is in the clinic that the overall strategy um, is, is, is feasible and seems to work. We just really want to find the key compounds that do that really, really well. Um, and we're already on our way. Um, so this is early data from the screen. Uh, this is the control. So basically, uh, you see that um, in, this, in this case, uh, this is a reflection of neighbor counts. So a lot of neighbors up here. A lot of, uh, not a lot of um, single cells, so tall and skinny, bad. You know, short and fat, good. Um, this is digoxin, and you see that most of the cells are now single cells, and there are very few clusters. Um, if we go into a first screen, uh, we can already tell that there are some compounds that, um, based on a, a selective uh, uh, effort for the structure activity relationships, based on digoxin, we, we can improve upon uh, the formula. Um, so from about uh, 50 to 60% of this solution with digoxin, we're already um, getting into the 80% uh, dissolution range. But as I showed you up in, in, in a slide before, we really want to see this up to uh, close to 100%. Um, it, it, this is now a lot of hand waving, uh, but this is the plan that we have for our clinical, um, or for, for our development to, to, to uh, get into the clinic. Um, and basically, uh, the, seed, the seed financing um, is, is here. Uh, that should lead to the discovery of hopefully about four or so uh, lead compounds that we can then uh, take forward into the preclinical stage for which uh, we will be raising um, a Series A um, starting uh, 2023. 20, uh, uh, the goal there is that the Series A is going to last us uh, to become a clinical stage company and, and then go out and raise a larger uh, Series B. Um, I do want to introduce briefly the, the team. So I already talked about uh, Nicolo Aceto. He's a professor at ETH um, in Zurich. Uh, Dr. or Professor Christoph Rocklitz, uh, until about two weeks ago, uh, was the uh, head of the oncology department at the University of Basel. Uh, he's now retired. Uh, he's spending a couple of months, I believe, traveling in Australia and New Zealand. And when he's back uh, in next year, he'll be uh, joining Page. And uh, Dana Jato, uh, she is Nicola's wife, um, currently works at uh, Sandoz and also will be uh, joining us as soon as we are, as we are funded. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention, and maybe we have time for any questions.